Okay, now I'm going to talk about getting your Nano ready for spinning. We're almost ready to start, but not quite. So I've got my old uh, bobbin on. I'm going to take this off because I'm spinning very, very fine, and uh, that's not very easy for you to see. So uh, I'll take the brake band off, unhook the drive band from the pulley there, bring it round over the front maiden so you don't lose it, and lift the flyer out. Again, this back bearing's loose. You don't want to lose that. So take that off and put it somewhere safe. The bobbin will just slide off. So our new bobbin. If you've not put your bobbins together yet, they come in uh, three pieces. You've got the centre tube and ends. I'll click my ends on. Make sure you push the ends on pretty firmly. There we go. Oh, a nice click. This end is on nice and tightly. This end I felt when I put it on. It's not. This end twists a little bit. If I have this end where the scotch tension cord is, I may find that all the braking effort is put into this bit of plastic and this carries on happily turning. So I'm going to make sure that the solid end here is at that end of the wheel. And also I'm going to attach my leader to this end to pad it out a bit and make sure my bobbin doesn't pop off. The last thing I want is a full bobbin of yarn and this coming off my yarn spilling off everywhere. So uh, for a leader, any old bit of yarn will do. You do want it to be plied because then it doesn't matter which way you're spinning in, it's not going to come undone and come apart. Measure out, what's that, about 18 inches of yarn. Then I will take this end off, push that down the end there and pop the end back on. There, that's far more sturdy now. And you can see down the middle, that end's not getting in the way, so I'll leave it. If it was sticking out, I'd poke my scissors in there and cut it, but it's fine. You can also tie your leader onto your shaft or tape it on. Just whatever you do, make sure it doesn't move freely. If it slips on the shaft, you're not going to get take up. So I'll put my bobbin onto the wheel. Put a drive band in this groove on the flyer, make sure it sits nicely in that groove and put it around the pulley again, make sure it sits, if it's not sitting properly, if it fell off down there or into the uh, drive shaft, it's not going to work. And my scotch tension cable, again yours is just a bit of elastic but it works exactly the same way, anchor it in the slit in the back, put it over the bobbin so it sits in this little groove on the bobbin and anchor it on the front. Uh, nice loose tension. Now we have our leader here. I want to feed it through the yard gu yarn guides. Just pop it in like that, pop it in like that. This front guide here should be roughly level with the orifice so your yarn makes a nice straight path there. That one stays still as you spin. This one you move up and down wherever you'd like it. I'm just going to leave mine in the middle for now. Alright, get my orifice hook. And feed that through. Now for now I'm not going to attach any yarn, I'm just going to play about with this leader a little bit to uh, get used to the feel of spinning. So uh, turn everything on. I can't remember if that's on or off. Let's see. There we go. Ooh, that's not good. Something's rubbing there, so I'm going to stop that and see what's making that terrible noise. I forgot to put the rear bearing in, so apparently that's what happens with no bearing. Let's try that again. There you go. With your elastic drive band, if you've found the perfect tension, you can just lift it off here and pop it back over the uh, rear maiden then you won't have to readjust every single time that is the one advantage of a longer stretchy cord over this system I do like this because it's far more infinitely variable, it's less fiddly getting in there, I can just turn that a millimetre or so and change my tension but yours does have uh, an advantage right, let's try this again that's more like it 
Okay, so I'm spinning in the uh, Z direction, which you can see is clockwise, and if I hold this yarn ever so gently, it stays where it is, but if I let it go and feed it in, you can see it's wrapping around the flyer. That's exactly how it should be. If I had my tension up so hard, it was pulling this out of my hands, it'd be bad for the wheel and just unnecessary. So I'm going to wind this off and we'll try that again. I'll up the tension so you can see uh, what it looks like if it's too high. Uh, that's a little bit stronger. Oh, it doesn't even want to turn now because uh, tension's so high I've increased friction so I'll lift it. No, it's oh my battery's turned off now. It's much better to do this in the mains. I should have uh, brought an extension lead in. Never mind. There we go. So this is a little bit higher, a bit slower, so you can see what's going on. If I let go of this, it sucks straight out of my hands. That's far too high. We don't need it pulling that hard. So I'm going to adjust this down again. I'll test by just push my finger on there. You should have quite a lot of play in that band. So, if you are a beginner and you're still finding you're very unsure about the whole way this works, we can attach some different yarn to this leader and you can just have a play and change your settings, get used to the feeling of yarn in your hands and until you're uh, more comfortable. So I've got here, it's just a big old cone of weaving cotton. Um, you've not got a really good view of what I'm doing. Let's move it a little bit over there. There we go. Ooh, a little bit too far. Perfect. Now you've got a bit of a longer view of uh, the area in front of the orifice. First, I'm going to tie a knot in my leader. Some people don't do this, uh, they just attach their fibre directly to the leader. I like a knot, it makes it a little bit easier. This knot may have trouble getting through these guides, so it's just something to watch uh, as it's feeding on. And I'll trim this bit because it is unnecessary. So, for now, I'm just taking this extra yarn and uh, attaching it to leader. Make sure all these bits and bobs are turned on. And there we go. So I can feed this through. Yeah, that knot's not good. So turn this off and just wind that through by hand. Once that knot is through out of our way, we won't have any more problems. Okay, so this yarn, got an infinite amount of this yarn to mess about with. So uh, you do whatever you need until you feel comfortable. There we go. So what I recommend you do is practice feeding it a set length in so you can maybe do about that much for a count of three. So you'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you see here, I'm getting a bit of pigtailing. That means my tension actually isn't high enough. So I'll uh, up that a teensy bit. And there we go. That seems to be feeding on better. That could also, of course, mean I've got way too much twist going into this yarn, which makes sense because it's already applied yarn. It doesn't need any more twist. So I can turn that right down nice and slowly. Up my tension a bit more. No, let's see. There we go. So it's a little bit fiddly to adjust. So you just play around with this, feeding on your yarn, and uh, until you're happy. There we go. It's feeding in nicely. No pigtailing. Fairly steady speed. I'm not used to spinning at such slow speeds, so uh, all these settings are a little bit new to me. Again, just feed your yarn in, find a nice, slow, steady rhythm. It shouldn't be pulling it out of your hands, but it likewise shouldn't be pigtailing. Uh, 
and you can try upping your speed. Uh, putting a lot more twist in, so I have to uh, feed it in faster to stop it uh, being overspun. If you like, you can try changing the direction. But if you change the direction now, after we've been spinning this way, well, I'll show you what happens. It will start to wind on the opposite way, and you'll have some sort of disaster. See here, it's all, yeah, it's not happy. So uh, you don't want to go both ways in the same project, but you can either take your bobbin on and turn it round, or uh, put a new bobbin on. So uh, once you are comfortable with just playing with this yarn, changing your tension, changing your speed, changing your direction, you know how your spinner works, you can finally get on to spinning actual fibre. I will start a new video for that.